from uh, everything I can gather in the, in the news, the, uh, it seems to be a worldwide thing. It's, it's fascinating to watch on a perverted level because it's amazing that the same people who got us into this shit are the same people who say they're going to get us out. Isn't that interesting? I sure hope that they left breadcrumbs in the woods. As we came closer and closer to this situation, there isn't one world leader, not one. No one spoke up. Nobody. Not anyone. And I can guarantee you this, anyone who had a job, uh, a regular job, before the shit hit the fan, probably six months before the shit, the shit hit the fan, somebody in your office, might have been even you, turned to somebody else and went, uh, I think we're fucked. <laughs> Everybody should have noticed. Obama didn't talk about it. McCain didn't talk about it. Sarah Palin didn't even know we had a thing called an economy. <laughs> but no one said anything. They said nothing. All we heard in the United States was this. It went on every day that there is nothing more wonderful than the economic system known as capitalism. It is the most splendid garden there is. It was created in the mind of God himself. And that's why it's perfect. It's so perfect that it has its own sunlight and it irrigates itself. It's an absolute miracle, capitalism. And if it goes completely unregulated, that garden will grow and grow and grow until all the peoples of the earth will share in its fruit. And so I went to bed every night dreaming of my fruit. <laughs> and then I woke up one morning and there was the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States going, We're fucked! We're totally fucked! You have no idea how fucked we are! We are solidly fucked! You feel that hand up your ass? It's looking for a couple of quarters. Shove some straws in your nose. The river of shit is rising. Get used to beets. Fucking build a root cellar, you dopey shit. Pull out your gold fillings and put them on eBay. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Then he ran around the White House with his hair on fire. <laughs> and all I thought was, wow, what, what could have possibly happened last night? <laughs> was he sitting in front of his computer at 4.30 in the morning, just finishing up his, uh, you know, online math course? Everybody knew there was going to be uh, a problem. Anybody who paid any attention, because there was a housing bubble. Fucking in the United States, you'd, there'd be a house cost uh, $70,000. A year later, you go back, house cost $700,000. What the fuck? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, they built a gazebo in the back. <laughs> it's made entirely out of human scrotums. <laughs> it's the most comfortable place in town. In the United States, they actually blame people who they said couldn't afford rent, and yet these people bought houses. <laughs> Fuckers. It's their fault. No, it's not. It's not their fault. Can't yell about those people because there isn't anyone in their right mind. If you were completely broke and somebody came to you and said, you know, look, I know you can't afford to pay rent. Want a house? What are you going to say? No, I'm going to continue to live over a grate in my box. <laughs> Congressmen blame people who didn't read their mortgages. Those fuckers! They didn't read... No one, let me point out, has ever read their mortgage. That's why we have lawyers. 
They read contracts. That is their job. They spend three years learning a language that if a normal person read, they would have a stroke. <laughs> I saw my mortgage. It's 100 pages long. And on the last page, there was the outline of a boat with a squirrel in it. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? It's 100 pages of a run-on sentence. There's no punctuation anywhere. It's like driving a car without brakes. After the first three lines, I had my first out-of-body experience. I hovered over myself. And I had to promise that I wouldn't read the fourth line, and then I could re-enter my body again. <clears throat> it is purely and simply greed. It is greed that caused all of this. That's it. And if you ever are wondering how greed can become more and more perfect, just look at my country. That is what my country, one of the things that is one of our great contributions to mankind. We have perfected greed. We came up with Bernie Madoff. Top that, fuckers. <laughs> it reads like fiction. It reads like fucking fiction, only if there was a fiction book, a novel, and the main character did what Bernie did, and his last name was Madoff, you'd go, that's bullshit. <laughs> Greed is an easy thing to see. The head of Merrill Lynch, which is a huge financial company that, that sunk like the fucking Titanic, um, over, in the last month before it fucking dropped dead as a company, he signed bonus checks to basically a whole group of people uh, in the company who, for all intents and purposes, blew up the engine room. And I don't know why that joke never works. I don't know. I'm serious, it's my fault. And it's just something, and we'll cut this out at a fucking TV thing. But, <laughs> but I've done the joke 15 times in the last 18, 20 days and fucking never. It, and it's not your, it's fucking the way I'm saying it. Okay. So. <laughs> so, um, he also redid his office. For the, so the, for he, he paid $1.5 million to redo his office a month before the company goes bankrupt. Now, if I was doing a financial office, if I worked in a financial office, this is what I would have. For $1.5 million, I'd have a, a chair for the fucker I got to talk to to sit in. I'd have my desk, my chair, and behind me, the whole rest of the office would be filled with a giant aquarium like 18, 20 feet high, with a young intern who's at the top of it. And in the aquarium is a great white shark. And the intern spends the whole day just throwing meat in at the shark. And the shark spends the whole day going... And I spend the whole day, and I never talk to any of the clients, I just point and laugh. He spent... His money, $63,000 on a credenza. Does anybody know what that is? <laughs> I gather it's kind of a, a glorified filing cabinet. I always thought it was the two bones above your ass bone. <laughs> As in my credenza is acting up. And that would make a hell of a piece of furniture made entirely out of human bone. <laughs> $63,000, that'd be a steal. <laughs> he spent $87,000 on an area rug. I know what that is. That's a rug that covers an area. <laughs> and for that amount of money, uh, if I spent $87,000 on an area rug, I would like it to be woven from the pubic hair of virgins. <laughs> yes. And uh, I would have a, also receive a leather-bound book. And in it would be pictures of the women who contributed to my rug. 
And I would keep that book in my credenza. <laughs> the big argument in my country right now is the amount of regulation that should come to bear on capitalism at this point. Well, um, and there's, the, there's some people who still say no regulation whatsoever. Uh, but the problem with capitalism is that people are involved. <laughs> and a lot of them are greedy, and the ones who aren't greedy apparently are fucking stupid. And so it has to be regulated. And the reason it has to be regulated is because when the shit hit the fan, one of the first rules that they wanted to institute, because this wasn't written down already, and apparently needed to be, is that the lender should be absolutely sure that the borrower has the financial assets and resources in order to pay the lender back. I, I, that's the punchline. Okay, bankers, banks, fucking here, fucking everywhere, all across the world. There were people running banks who didn't know that. Are you fucking kidding me? Everybody knows that. You learn that in elementary school. Some prick comes up to you every day, can I borrow five cents? Fuck you. I'll never see it again, shithead. And if that's, if they needed to write that rule, the second rule should be, if you take a shit, wipe yourself.